Welcome to another edition of uh, Advocate with Albert Apkirian. Uh We are here, we're getting close to election day, and uh, we are interviewing somebody that's, that's very, very dear to us, somebody that we believe should be the next county um, district attorney. And uh, we have with us Jackie Lacey, the current district attorney of the County of Los Angeles. And we are very, very, somebody who mentored me for many, many years, Robert Filibosian, the former district attorney of Los Angeles County. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Albert. Thank you. Uh, Thank you we, for having me. Uh, I appreciate you coming in and accepting our invitation. Um, we've, we've had an interview uh, a few weeks ago, and we talked about your background. Uh, you are a, you know, Southern Californian. Uh, and we've talked about your, uh, uh, your where, where you've gone to school. Uh, I want to tackle something more, um, more, uh, something that the, some of the re, uh, some of the viewers have asked us to tackle, and that's the difference between you and Gascon specifically. And uh, if you can tell me a little bit about what you see will happen if you are reelected, and then what will happen if Gascon is elected. Right. Well, I see myself as someone who can implement reforms, and right now there are a lot of reforms being implemented. For instance, your folks may recall that just a few weeks ago we dismissed 66,000 old marijuana convictions, right, and sealed people's records. And so those kinds of reforms, uh, as well as conviction review units and other reforms, we think should be implemented safe, you know, they should be implemented, but you shouldn't just throw away safety. And with Gascon, what he wants to do is implement a lot of reform, but you won't really hear him talk about victims or public safety. And that's because where he came from in San Francisco when he was the DA, the property crime rate there uh, was the highest per capita in the nation, the highest per capita in the nation. In LA County, we're lucky. We have lower uh, crime rates per capita, and that's because we have people in power, people who are leading, who speak with one another, work with one another, implement necessary reforms, but don't end up sacrificing the safety of LA County residents. Let's face it, even though crime is down, everybody thinks about burglaries, um, you know, robberies, all of those things go into the mix when you're going outside, when you're in your homes, and people here really want to know that their community is safe. It's nice to hear. So let me, let me ask the, the, the question from uh, Mr. Philobosian. You know, I don't like people uh, coming into a, to a, to a uh, you know, community and trying to uh, buy the community. Uh, what do you see on Gascon? I've heard some, there's some, a lot of money behind him. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? Well, Gascon was a DA in San Francisco. He couldn't run for re-election there because he was so unpopular, so he decided to come to Los Angeles. He literally parachuted into L.A. He is backed by literally Bay Area billionaires. I mean, he was given $1 million by one wife of a Bay Area billionaire. He was given almost a million dollars by another person in the Bay Area. These are people who have never lived in L.A., don't have anything to do with L.A., and they are bankrolling this person who came from outside, he's an outsider, and simply wants to not prosecute people. That's his attitude. In San Francisco, the crime in terms of burglaries from motor vehicles is through the roof. You cannot park a car in San Francisco without having it broken into. And in Los Angeles, that doesn't happen. And the reason it doesn't happen is because we have a DA who is willing to prosecute and knows how to prosecute those cases. Yeah, uh, go ahead. And I, I just want to, uh, Bob is, is very, very kind, very complimentary. We have burglaries, but not to the extent that they have in San Francisco. Like I said, San Francisco is, uh, you know, they have signs that with broken windows that tell you, don't leave anything in the car. The police tell you, don't leave anything in the car. Some people just leave their car unlocked because they assume it's going to be broken into. And I think when we give up on our security and safety, when it becomes that bad, that that uh, is a tragedy. And that's the reason he left San Francisco is because he couldn't get reelected there with that kind of record. And now he comes here to try to reinvent himself and say he's here to save uh, people from Los Angeles. And nothing could be further from the truth. You know, this leads to uh, something that a lot of people talk about is that if, 
if you don't let the police do what they're supposed to be doing, then people are going to have private cities and have private police, and then the private police really doesn't have the same restrictions as the police does uh, to be able to uh, do things in the city. And that's something that Gascon is really pushing people to do. If you basically say every, there's no crimes really, you don't pr prosecute anyone, and you let people do what they want to do, then you basically open it up to private cities and private policing where they basically are going to vote to close their borders and if you go into inside their city inside that small community then they would have private policing take care of everything which is i think a, a disaster uh, again goes into let's not prosecute anyone just let everyone do what they want to do well most of us can't afford to live behind the gates or afford private policing most of us are just making a living trying to pay our mortgage uh, put our kids through school and we have to do what we can to make sure that uh, community policing takes place and that our neighborhoods are safe. Um, sexual misconduct. Uh, you know, we just had the Weinstein case. Uh, prior to that, we had a Bikram case. And there's a lot, number of cases that, you know, sometimes you can't talk about specific cases, but the, what's happening behind closed doors cannot be discussed with the public, of course. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about those cases and how important it is for the, um, for the district attorney's office to prosecute uh, some of the sexual predators? Well, sexual assault is probably one of the most uh, difficult cases that the DA's office um, prosecutes and the victims that get hurt, they're, they're hurt for the rest of their lives. So uh, in the Harvey Weinstein case you mentioned, there was just a conviction in New York. Uh, he's going to be brought to L.A. and we're ready to prosecute him here the day he gets here. Chances are, though, the case won't go to trial that quickly, but we're ready. I think what's important for people to understand, and, and because we as a community follow uh, cases where the bad actor is notorious like a Weinstein and a Burke and Yoga, is that cases involving uh, sexual assaults where you know the person, where there's some kind of relationship, you know the person, are very, very difficult. And you saw that in watching the New York case, that oftentimes people will ask, well, what's your sexual history? What if the person raped you? Why did you stay in touch with him? Why did you continue to have a relationship? And now we're much more enlightened in a society. We know that with victims, there's no right way for a victim to react who has been the victim of someone who's been the victim of sexual assault. The important thing is for us to look at the evidence, be open to um, human behavior, and understand that these are victims too. And, and with the uh, Harvey Weinstein case, obviously we filed, it's coming to us. With the Burkham Yoga case, that too is very, very challenging, very difficult. Uh, and nevertheless, we're looking at it again to see if there's a way for us to prove the charges. And people have to remember, in this country, there's, uh, we have the Constitution. We can't just lock up people uh, based on uh, rumors and innuendos. We have to have evidence, and that evidence has to withstand cross-examination and the test of cross-examination. And we wouldn't want it any other way if we were accused of something like that. So uh, the LA County District Attorney's Office, we have... Um, a sex crimes unit, and we have a VIP unit that prosecutes these kind of cases. And these lawyers are highly trained. Uh, they know what they're doing. They know how to prove cases. They know where to look for evidence and how to bolster a case. But they're also trained that if the evidence isn't there, they don't file it. But it's a, it's a highly trained office, one of the best offices in the country. That's great. Um, I have some more questions to ask, but we've got to take a quick break. After we take the quick break, then we'll come back and we'll uh, continue our program. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Again, uh, we're uh, discussing elections, discussing district attorney's office with uh, uh, current district attorney Jackie Lacey and former district attorney Robert Filibosian. Uh, we ended up uh, discussing sexual misconduct cases and sexual uh, uh, cases like, like uh, uh, you know, uh, Weinstein case. I want to go into one step further talking about human trafficking and minor trafficking and teenage trafficking 
Um, and it, it is something that really everyone feels the same way about it. I don't think there's anyone that's gonna come and say, you know, uh, human trafficking is good. Uh, what is the district attorney doing in reference to addressing human trafficking, especially minors uh, being trafficked into the, into the country and being involved in all kinds of illegal activities? Well, Al Albert, it's important to think about the history of uh, human trafficking. Before, when we called it pimping and pandering, it wasn't taken that seriously. And we were uh, jailing a lot of the minors and women for prostitution without asking, wait a minute, we've noticed you've been out in the street a number of times, where's all that money going? You have no money on you. Once we switched the paradigm and started look at th asking questions about who is responsible, who's benefiting, that's when we realized that there was a human sex trade alive and, and, and functioning here domestically, that it wasn't foreign. And so since 2012, the law changed and said um, that you don't have to prove the minor consented to be trafficked. Because that used to be the issue, is these minors would get brainwashed. And if you called them in, they'd say, well, were you doing this against your will? And they'd say, well, no, I wanted to work for this adult. Uh, and that made it challenging. So since then, I formed a human trafficking unit. And in that unit, we've, we've discovered there's organized crime, there's gang members that are involved in this. And we've rescued a number of these young people off the streets, brought them to safety, but more importantly, focused in on these very, very vicious and dangerous traffickers and put them away for longer periods of time. But it's a really important issue to highlight uh, because you never know when you're looking at a girl whether she's being trafficked or not. So we really need the public to be aware and sort of pay attention. And if it doesn't feel right, call the police. And there's a, when, when they're rescued from these human traffickers, uh, there's a place for them to go. There's, there right. are programs that you would, you would kind of uh, put them into this way, then they're, they're not like, because most of these ki kids, I call them kids, are, have no place to go. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you would like to say there's a certain model of child who is susceptible to human trafficking. It's true, most of them are, are um, foster children. Some come from dysfunctional homes, but some come from the Midwest. Some, uh, one came from a law enforcement family. Uh, but uh, what happens is they get caught up. The trafficker tells them that they love them, that they're there for them, and no one else cares about them. So what we do is we work with organizations like CAST, uh, as well as uh, Forgotten Children, and those organizations are places we can connect the minor to right away. So you don't have to stay uh, with the traffickers. There are other places. We connect them with those services. And those people, Journey Out is another one. I've got to mention Journey Out. But um, those places connect the, tr the, the uh, girls and, and some boys with a safe place to live so they can get back in school, get medical care, and get out of the clutches of uh, a trafficker. And so. Uh, we have posters all over the place. We have posters now in emergency rooms, every emergency room. Uh, and uh, I hope to have them one day in every mall so that every child who is trapped into this abusive situation can call that hotline and we'll come out and rescue them. Very necessary. I appreciate that. It's, it's something that uh, that's saddens everyone when they, when they hear about this, when somebody's trapped and they can't get out. So it's, right. it's, right. it's, it's, uh, it's nice to know that district attorney is very actively uh, helping and, uh, and accommodating this, this individuals and not just prosecuting them, uh, not, you know, just because they're pro you know, prostituting themselves or doing other things. Um, uh, Mr. Philobosian, if you can tell me, you know, you were a district attorney before and now you've seen uh, the new district attorney. Uh, what has changed since you were there and what have you seen uh, Ms. Lacey did, did, has done to the department that you say, well, this is the person that I'm going to endorse? One of the things that the DA's office under Jackie Lacey has done is to expand its victim assistance unit. There are now something like a hundred people uh, and she was able to get budget money from the County Board of Supervisors to expand that unit so victims of crime now are not left alone in the system. Uh, we didn't have the advantage of those kinds of resources when I was a district attorney. We had a very small unit. We did the best we could. But now it's a very robust unit. Every single crime victim is taken by the hand, almost literally, 
by the people that work in uh, the DA's office under Jackie Lacey and their help. They uh, help them to get uh, state restitution money. Uh, they help them to get rehabilitation if they need it, physical rehabilitation if they've been injured. Uh, help them get to court so that they can testify effectively and put the predators away. Yeah, you know, Albert, um, being a victim is difficult. It's not like they're out there screaming and yelling and, and calling for attention. Most people who are victimized by crime, uh, they just want justice. They don't want notoriety. And so since I've been there, we discovered that um, we were underserving victims, so, so to speak, because we didn't have enough victim advocates. So we increased by 100 our number of victim advocates. If I have my way, one day we'll have them in every police station, every hospital, so you can meet the victim right then and there in a system. Our victims, for the most part, are people of color. About 80% are black, brown, or Asian. Uh, most of the victims that we serve, by, by and large, are women. And when I say victims, these are people who have maybe been sexually assaulted, as we mentioned, uh, robbed. Um, you know, other, th other unspeakable things have happened. Some we help families after someone has been killed. Sometimes they don't even have money to bury someone, especially if it's a young person and there wasn't life insurance involved. So we help them apply to the, re we apply for them to the state restitution fund and get them uh, the help that they need. One, one flaw that we corrected when, remember when AB 109 was passed and prisoners were moved from the state prison to the county jail level? Well, there was no mechanism to collect restitution from those people, so they were getting away with no restitution. Our office uh, took the lead, got that uh, law change, and now, uh, even though you're serving your time in the county jail level, you still have to pay restitution to your victim, and that's the way it should be, yeah. is nice. that you should pay restitution. No question. Um, you're a female district attorney, and uh, I know that you don't want to rely on the female part too much because at the end of the day, you're, you are a district attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, how does that help you in reference to trying to help um, you know, fe uh, women get better jobs, getting more prosecutors that are women, getting people on the right positions that are women? Because you're in a uh, you know, place of power and you can actually uh, help others reach where you have reached. So I'll tell you a story. I became a lawyer because I heard a woman lawyer speak to my class at UC Irvine back in 1977. A woman came to my class, it was taken a I didn't think I was going to be a lawyer, a woman came to my class and uh, she started talking about how exciting her job was and what she was doing. And that one hour listening to that woman speak, and she looked like me. She was an African-American woman. She looked like me, she was dressed well, and she was so passionate. That changed the trajectory of my life, that one happenstance lecture. And so I became a lawyer because of, because of her. That's what I want to do for particularly uh, girls and, 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 and women who think, what am I going to do with my life? Can I actually lead? And especially as a prosecutor, you're, you're, dealing, you're, you're in a male-dominated field. And uh, uh, many women uh, want these kinds of positions, but they don't know how to get there. And so in the DA's office, I often will do what's called ride along with the DA for the day, where I'll take a, a girl and, uh, or, or a young woman who says, I think I'm interested and they can follow me along from the beginning of my day to the end of the day. But, but I think what's important in leadership positions is here we are dealing with victims, jurors, judges, and we're in a very diverse county. LA County is probably one of the most diverse cities in the nation. And it's important that uh, those who are in power of the justice system look like the community that they serve, reflect the community that they serve. But make no mistake about it, I'm very competitive. Uh, while I'm the first woman, the first African American, I every day want to think about how can I leave a legacy so that people look back at it and say, because she was the district attorney, human trafficking got some of the attention it needed, mental health. Uh, got the attention it needed, that things were better, that I left the office in a better place. Uh, the LA County District Attorney's Office 
is more than 50% women. It's 56% women now. And I like to say we attract women because we encourage them to come and they feel that uh, they can achieve and get ahead. Well, with your leadership, hopefully, it would, would go higher, and, and, and uh, the males won't, will be the minority, hopefully. <laughs> um, let me just uh, say thank you. Thank you for coming down. Everyone should vote on March 3rd. It's very important that you go to vote. I know it, the voting is open for an entire week. No one could say I didn't have time on that day. Voting is open for one week. There are uh, local uh, precincts that are open. You must go and vote. Uh, you know, I have already voted for Jackie Lacey on my absentee ballot, uh, but you should go and vote for your candidates and especially, vo hopefully, vote for Jackie Lacey. Thank you very much for coming down here, and hopefully we'll talk on March 4th when you're elected already for your second term. Thank you, Albert. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very much for watching our show. We'll be back later. Thank you.